Hello there. Today's video will be a brief introduction to the 555 timer IC with an example of using it in a stable mode. Every electronics hobbyist should have at least heard of this IC more than once. So why is it so popular? Well, first of all, as its name implies, it is a timing IC, so its purpose is to produce precise timing signals. What this means is that the output oscillates between two voltages supplied by the circuit designer at a frequency chosen by the circuit designer. Therefore, the IC can be used to provide delay to a circuit or provide a clock signal, allowing synchronization of digital circuits. It can also create a PWM signal, which if you have seen my video on PWM, then you should know that it can control a lot of things like motors. Furthermore, there are also other benefits explaining why it is still very prevalent when there are other timing IC or alternatives such as crystal oscillators. It has a wide working voltage range from 5 volts to 16 volts. The timing is independent of the supply voltage as it uses one-third and two-thirds of VCC as the threshold. It provides 200 milliamp output source, which can directly be applied to drive components like LED or motor. You can use the 555 timer IC in monostable, astable, or bistable circuits. Now I will briefly explain the modes of the multivibrator circuit in a stable, monostable, or bistable. A multivibrator circuit oscillates between a high state and a low state, producing a continuous output. Since the 555 timer IC essentially act as a multivibrator circuit, the IC also has these three modes of operation. Just note that it is rarely used in bistable mode, as there are other better IC for flip-flop and latches. In a stable multivibrator, also called a free-running multivibrator, is a circuit that continuously produces square waves or pulses without the use of an external trigger. This process should repeat indefinitely. The term A-stable refers to the absence of a stable state in this particular type of multivibrator. By changing the values of the resistors and capacitors in the circuit, the frequency and duty cycle of the output waveform can be altered. If you have seen my ESP32 with I2C video, then you should have seen that a clock signal is needed to allow synchronization of data transmission. The circuit used to provide that signal is in a stable multivibrator. A monostable multivibrator, also called a one-shot multivibrator, is a circuit that responds to an external trigger by producing a single pulse with a set duration. A pulse from outside causes this type of multivibrator to flip from its stable state to an unstable one. The circuit returns to its stable condition after a certain amount of time and generates a single output pulse. Its application include pulse shaping, debouncing, and time delay functions. Bistable multivibrator is also known as flip-flop. It has two stable states, high and low. The circuit will stay in its stable state indefinitely unless another trigger signal enters it. This property allows the flip-flop to store state information or a single bit, making flip-flop the basic storage unit in digital electronics. Digital circuits frequently use bistable multivibrators for memory storage, data transport, and synchronization. They can also be utilized in shift registers and counters. Now coming back to our topic of the 555 timer, we will examine the pinout of this IC first. The left side is the block diagram and pin map of 555 IC, and the right side is an actual image of the NE555 IC, which belongs to the 555 IC family. Pin one and eight are for ground and power supply respectively, Pin 2 and 6 are responsible for changing the output. You can notice they that are connected to two inner comparator. Pin 2 is the inverting input, whereas pin 6 is the non-inverting input of the op amp comparator. The output of the IC lies at pin 3. Pin 5 can control the timing of the 555 IC by overriding two-thirds VCC threshold, and you can utilize it to change the width of the output signal. When we don't need this function, connect to a 10 nanofarad capacitor and ground to eliminate noise, though using smaller values like 100 picofarads seems to work as well. Pin 4 can reset the circuit when applied low, so we just connect it to VCC to prevent unwanted resetting. Pin 7 is very important as it allows the timing capacitor to discharge through ground. It is strongly recommended that you don't remove R1 and connect this pin straight to VCC. Now let's get to the more practical part as we test out our stable circuit. The point of this project is simply to generate a PWM signal that should blink the LED. The datasheet from the Texas Instrument already has application circuit for us to follow. 
but I will redraw my schematic in KiCad for better visualization. We can then examine the signal with a small oscilloscope. In this schematic, you can control the frequency, the high and low time, with two resistors, RA and RB, and one electrolytic capacitor. You don't have to use the components with the same value as shown in this schematic. You can use those of different values. Just note that there is a formula for finding the frequency and duty cycle included in the datasheet. This formula allows the circuit designer to select the correct components to create the needed signal. You can also search online for 555 Stable Calculator to save some time calculating. Here I have also included an explanation behind how this 555 a stable mode multivibrator work. You need basics electronics knowledge regarding transistor op amp and RS flip-flop to understand. I won't focus much on this so you can either skip to the real circuit right away or pause and read to better understand how things work under the hood. Just remember that the timing capacitor is always charged between one-third of VCC and two-third of VCC and discharged through R2 or RB only. This creates the fluctuation in the voltage level between pin two and six and therefore the output is changed. The detailed process of each stage is shown here. I'm using an Arduino to provide five volts power supply here. Once we connect it, we can start the LED blinking. From the look of it, the high time seemed to be twice as long as the low time, which matches our calculation. I tried to adjust the oscilloscope, but it seems like at a given point in time, it can't get both the duty cycle and frequency right. But taking snapshot of it at different interval suggests that the calculation works out correctly. You can also replace either R1 or R2 with a potentiometer, so you can change the duty cycle and frequency of the signal as shown here. Just note that connect pin seven to VCC without any resistor can harm the IC, so don't make this small mistake I'm doing here, as I leave it like that for a few seconds. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and as always, you can support my channel by dropping likes and subscribes, or even consider giving a small donation with my info under the description. Hope to see you again in my future video.